Hey guys, this is Chris Mancola with the Mancola Group at West USA Realty, and I'm coming at you live. Um, and uh, I'm alone today, so you get just me. And we're, today we're going to be talking about the four biggest things uh, you need to know about selling your house, things you should know about selling your house. And, um, you know, these are things you could share with your friends, family who may be thinking about selling a property. Have them contact us. We can get them more information, of course. Be sure to also, be sure to ask questions if you have any uh, during this Facebook Live. Make sure you like, uh, share, subscribe to these so you can get uh, updates every time we go live. Uh, usually, we're going live Wednesdays at uh, 1.30. Um, starting a little bit late today uh, because we were really working with some clients here, getting them set up on a couple of things. But I wanted to share a few ideas with you on this subject of uh, four major things you need to know you're going to be selling a, a house. So uh, one of the topics I want to talk about was pricing. Okay. So pricing is going to be one of the major keys when you're getting ready to sell a house. Um, if you price it uh, too high, um, you're basically going to uh, miss those people looking in a particular area because uh, that area will basically, you know, speak to you. The market kind of speaks to sellers and for us as realtors, uh, we get a lot of feedback on, um, you know, places that we're, um, you know, holding open houses on or, or listing for sale uh, through, uh, you know, phone calls or other agents and those sorts of things. So people who come through our, our listings and, you know, one of the biggest things we see is, you know, the pricing uh, is maybe not quite where it should be. So um, it's really important to price the property, you know, at market value. Um, a lot of times people, and it seems counterintuitive, will want to go, super high to start with and you know really um, a lot of times it can be best to do what's called a fire sale where you list your home actually just a little bit below um, the market value or the average market value of appraised uh, sales uh, homes in the area that are comparable sales in the area um, we did a whole another uh, video on how to price homes um, in another video but basically we're going to be looking at comparable sales so if it's a one story, you're going to be looking at one stories in the neighborhood, um, you know, within about a one mile square block, 200 square feet bigger or smaller. You know, you're not going to take a two story and compare it to a one story um, and those sorts of things. So um, we can, of course, you know, go into more detail on that. Uh, and we did another video, but when we price homes and we take a look at them, we can, um, you know, see them in person, really give you a good price on where they should be at. But pricing is super important because, um, Nobody wants to get ripped off. Um, nobody, you know, when they're looking in their search portals are going to be looking at things, you know, priced at, you know, uh, 20, 50, $100,000 over what homes are going for in a particular neighborhood, zip code or area. So um, you're going to miss all those people, you know, that maybe, you know, priced right out of your ser their search portals. Um, and as, as realtors, we can actually target those people, kind of reverse uh, uh, market to them through the portals, through the multiple listing service that properties are listed on. So it's super important to make sure the property is priced right. Um, you know, usually we're looking at segments of most people, you know, pricing stuff at, you know, five to $10,000 increments. In other words, you know, 200 to 210, 220. And that's how searches are set up, right? You don't put a search in for, you know, 200,000 uh, and, you know, 10 bucks or, you know, uh, those sorts of things. So we want to make sure that we're, um, you know, setting up the, the listing, uh, setting up the pricing to capture those people that are going to have those searches set up or searching by those, uh, you know, $100,000 or $20,000 even increments, okay, uh, you know, 200000 to 220 depending on what they're qualified for or what they can afford to, to purchase. So pricing is super important. If you price a little bit lower, you get more interest, you get bidding wars, you can get multiple offers pretty quickly. Our market's really strong. Prices are still going up, but it's important to make sure you don't overprice it. Plus, you got to worry about appraisal. Appraisal is another thing that can come into play, uh, <clears throat> and we have no control over that as realtors on either side. But appraiser, third party that comes in, and they're gonna they're gonna take the comparable sales in the area, the condition of the home, and figure out what they feel the appraised value is worth. And then the lender knows for the buyer, okay, we can you know lend this amount of money. And then you figure out where you're at at that point. But uh, it's super important to keep those things in mind. And those are some of the things that we're looking at, depending on which side we are in the equation. Um, <clears throat> so 
uh, as a realtor, you know, we're going to definitely go over that with our buyers and our sellers. But when you're selling a home, pricing is definitely super, super important. Probably one of the most important things we're going to be looking at. And again, we have a tendency to want to overprice a lot of times. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is access. Um, so it's super important to have access to the property so people can look at it, right? If people can't get in to look at it, you're not going to get as many offers unless it's an investor special, as we call it, where you know, maybe people aren't able to access the property right away until they do inspections um, and they're dealing with cash offers. So, um, you know, but in general, we're going to be wanting to have as much access as possible. So one of the things that we hear a lot sometimes from people is, do open houses really work or aren't the open houses for realtors? And it's true, you know, when we, when we have an open house, it certainly puts us out there, gives us, you know, more, we meet a lot of people that are looking to buy and sell homes. And in the area, you bet, we sure do. But, you know, most of the homes that we sell on our team and, uh, you know, people who are uh, uh, work in the business and, and a lot of realtors that you talk to who are out there really working for their clients want to make sure that the, the property is, you know, out there for the public to really see. And that comes with online presence, which we'll talk about in a minute with marketing and stuff. But you know, by having that open house, you allow, uh, you know, all day or several hours worth of access. You may even want to wait to do any showings until you do that open house to save your seller uh, those additional showings that they may uh, have where other buyers and, uh, and or realtors can bring their buyers through to look at the property and, um, you know, get a good look at it and not be, um, you know, have to be on any time constraints. Now, uh, when we set access up, usually we use uh, what are you know called uh, supra or digital boxes. Uh, a lot of times, in in our on our side as realtors, when we're listing a home for sale, um, and we can actually see who's logging in, what realtors are logging in, and which realtors are logging out for particular showings. But those showing times are set on that box typically, uh, you, you know, for whatever times you want to start at. Maybe you know eight nine o'clock in the morning, maybe six seven eight o'clock at night there may even be an additional code that needs to be put in with those so you know it makes it nice for the seller because uh, they know that the realtor is tracking anybody who's coming in and out they know a licensed realtor is coming through with the buyer when you're trying to sell your home on your own you don't necessarily have all these tools that we're talking about sometimes and you don't know who's coming in your house and a lot of times people do you know run into problems and it can be an unsafe uh, environment for uh, a lot of for sale by owners Whereas we're looking at people who are coming through with licensed realtors, they're going through a digital box system that only realtors can, you know, access, uh, but they're able to access it all day long. Now you want to make sure you try to not limit that as much as possible. So sometimes we see listings where, you know, can only show during these times. And we understand, you know, people have, uh, you know, things going on, family. Um, they may even have a renter in the property that, that we have to work around. But the more access, the more times you can allow people to access that property, again, in a safe way and in a way that's screened, but, you know, at, they're able to access that property, uh, you know, easily with your approval as the realtor uh, for your client as a seller, um, you know, the better off that seller is going to be, the more offers you're going to get faster uh, because people just want to get in and look at the house, right? They don't want to buy the house without looking at it, you know, typically. So, um, unless again, unless we're dealing with an investor and even then they're still going to want to do uh, an inspection probably. So super important to have the proper access. And again, we can go into more detail on all these. We'd love to be able to talk to you more about it, but uh, let's talk about the next thing. The third thing we'll talk about, we talked about pricing, we talked about access, talk about marketing. So super important to do a lot of marketing. Now you want to have proper signage. You want to have a super online presence. Um, uh, and there's a lot of ways to go about that, paid and unpaid. As realtors, we're doing, you know, all of the above. Um, and when we put it out on the multiple listing service, it goes out to all the third-party sites uh, like Zillow, Trulia, um, and, and all all the rest of the brokerages that are out there, and all the third-party sites that you that you um, sometimes come into contact with out there. But um, super super important to market the property. Um, properly with uh, professional pictures, uh, making sure the property is ready um, for sale, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Um, but it, you want to make sure you've got, you know, every, most people are looking online today and they, a lot of people um, are not only looking online, but they, they do go out to open houses. So what do you want to do for your open houses? You want to make sure 
your realtor has uh, the open house listed um, on the multiple listing service. So then it's listed on places like Zillow and it's listed on their multiple listing portals. If they have a realtor, which most people who buy a home today, again, that are not investors or whatever, they're going to have a realtor. So they're going to have MLS portal set up. Um, and so it gets out to all of these people, all these places, even the third party websites, so that people know that that open house is happening and then they can stop by and it's easy access. Um, again, an access point, super important for people to see the house. Um, so you want to make sure, you know, you've got it out there on social media today, Facebook, you know, uh, Facebook, obviously Instagram, um, do we do paid ads? Yes, we do. We do paid ads in addition to everything else, the portals that we're using out there. Um, you know, you want to have it even, you know, out there on things like Snapchat, you want to kind of meet the consumer wherever they are, whether they're younger, older, uh, internet savvy or not. And when you're doing an open house, you know, you want to have a lot of signage, right? You want to have a ton of signage besides that online presence so that people in the neighborhood know you're there. So all the side streets all around, all the major roads. So, you know, we want to put out, you know, bare minimum 20, but probably more like, you know, 30, 40, 50 signs so that, you know, in case signs blow over or whatever, we're able to get that, you know, traffic into the open house and direct them to where the property is. We want to have flags out front. We want to make it look like it's a huge event when we're having this open house. And if the open house is done right, you should have, you know, 20, 30, 40 groups of people through there. Um, you know, we're, we're also doing other things like we're contacting people in a neighborhood by door knocking them, giving them a flyer, making sure they know when it's going to happen. You know, we're, we're calling them, calling people in the neighborhood. Uh, maybe you're even texting them. You're targeting, the, hyper-targeting the, the local neighborhood and area on social media. So there's a lot of things we can do. Um, and there's a lot of other things that we just don't have uh, time to get into all the details of that. But uh, we do, you know, a lot of marketing and it's super important to make sure you have professionals do that marketing for you. So we're not just out there winging it um, on some of these other third party sites that really end up uh, could really end up getting you into some other problems, too. So uh, besides not even getting the proper marketing you need. Um, the fourth thing that's super important um, that I'll get into uh, before I get into that, I just want to mention one more thing. All the people that come through your open house, you know, we will make sure we're getting their contact information. We make them digitally sign in. Uh, we make sure we verify their contact information. Why? I want to follow up with all the realtors and all the possible buyers that are coming into the area so we can get that home sold, right? We want to get that home sold. So we want to make sure we can follow up. And we also want to get feedback for the seller, right? We want to get feedback for the seller. So that's part of part of what we do. And if you're selling your home on your own, you definitely want to get feedback, right? You want to know what people are saying about the price, the condition, all that good stuff. What do they think about the area, the layout? Um, obviously, certain things, you, you know, you can't change the area, <laughs> right? But there are maybe certain things you can tweak, which is kind of my last point. Um, and that is presentation. Uh, kind of goes a little in, <clears throat> hand in hand a little bit with all these things. But... The property needs to show well. So when people walk through the door, you don't want any potent, unnecessary smells. Um, you know, like, you know, a bunch of food cooking in the background, you know, that, that that's smelling the place up. Uh, probably not want to cook things like fish and all that kind of stuff. It'll stink the place up pretty bad when you're getting ready for sale. Uh, you're, you're not going to want to, you know, you're going to want to make sure the home is cleaned um, if possible, um, if it needs it. Uh, fresh coat of paint. Um, you're you're going to want to make sure the flooring's done. I mean, I'd rather see, you know, rather than, you know, messed up flooring and, and bad stuff, put the cheapest carpet in possible to at least freshen that uh, uh, flooring up. Um, and, you know, there's all kinds of alternatives today where you can use uh, vinyl flooring, that sort of thing. But you want to make sure that it's, it's clean, fresh, uncluttered, take, you know, clean out the closets. You got to move anyway, clean out the closets, box everything up at least get it into the garage, if not a separate pod or storage space. We can certainly help you with that, uh, with in between uh, storages like that. But at the very least, let's get that stuff in the garage and packed up. Got to move anyway. So want to make sure countertops, cabinets, everything is as, as cleaned up and decluttered as possible. Keep the place swept, uh, cleaned, 
bathrooms, kitchen, especially, uh, you know, when people walk through that door, you want those areas to look clean and fresh and clean, uh, cleaned up and decluttered so that when people are coming in there, they're thinking, wow, this place is clean. It's nice. It presents well. It shows well. Um, I, this is a place I can see myself living in, you know, and it seems like they took really good care of this place. You know, I come in in the spring and summer. It's hot outside. The AC's on. Oh, I feel like I could actually stay in here for a few minutes. And, you know, the house looks like it's been kept well and it's, it's clean and in good working order. Uh, not, you know, coming in and it stinks and things are just thrown all over the place um, and there's a mess and, and, and all that good stuff. So, um, again, we can go into tons and tons of detail on this. But one other thing I will mention is the actual staging and how things are. Um, and that comes down to, again, keeping things clean and and declutter and making things arranged so that the rooms look as big as possible as open as possible um, and as fresh as possible so guys if you have any other questions uh you know anybody who's thinking about selling a home right now or purchasing a home let us know we'd love to be able to go into more detail on this at least if nothing else they can pick our brain to get some good ideas on buying or selling a property uh whether you know that uh is uh, something they're thinking about doing right now or in the near future. Again, it's still a good time to buy or sell. Interest rates are still super low. Um, and so that makes it good for buyers and sellers. And right now, because of the inventory situation we're in, um, you know, we're still between that four to six uh, month supply. It's kind of really a balanced market. So um, it makes it good for buyers and sellers uh, from that standpoint. Uh, to have that balanced market where things are kind of even out a little bit more, but prices still are on the rise. Um, all the more reason, too, to have a real estate professional negotiate the best deal for you and get you through all these things. There's a lot of things on the back end that we have to look at and, and go through and be aware of um, for you. And we'll explain in more detail that, you know, usually most people aren't aware of and that they do um that we do on a daily basis because we're, we're in the market, we're in, we're in homes, we're buying, you know, helping people buy and sell homes all the time. So we're thinking about it, but they're not. So in any event, if you guys have any other questions, need any help with anything, give us a call, shoot us a text 480-788-8569 is our main line. And you can always check us out at mincolagroup.com. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you soon.